To be honest, I hope yeah. I'm 100% wrong. All right, well, welcome to another episode of the Bamford & Co. podcast. I'm here with my brother, Greg. We're going to do a little bit of a market update for our viewers. Now, Greg, you know, is it we're in the middle of October here? Is it what's happening in the market? Can you give me an idea of how many homes are are available for the consumers out yeah, there? Yeah, for sure. It, uh, it's interesting because quite a few agents we've heard communicating saying that we're getting more supply right now currently on the market. And, and when we pull the numbers, we're actually seeing maybe a little bit of the exact opposite. So currently in Saskatoon, we have 807 active listings available. Uh, but when you look at that, that's 189 of those are conditionally sold. So I don't think that we've seen these uh, numbers for the lack of inventory or, or since probably, what would you say, late, late probably winter last year? Would you say that would be like similar to where the inventory kind of I levels are? I would say are? it would be similar to close, close to last year's inventory. Is that yeah. we, do, we do have less homes that come onto the market when, when the weather starts to change. As soon yeah. as fall, you know, the, the leaves are off the ground is that, you know, the market does change a little bit. Um, by saying that is that there's still a ton of demand is that we're, we're still going to be a very busy season even through the winter months. Yeah, I don't think it's going to slow down. A lot of people say, like, what's the best time to be able to sell your property? And I don't think it really matters. I think that a lot of things are still going multiple multiple offers, especially if they're, they're priced right. Uh, another one of the, the stats kind of we had was there's only 525 single family uh, properties on the market uh, and only 412 of those are available that aren't conditionally sold. So right. that's when I break down those numbers, I'm thinking that's probably a quarter of what the inventory that we possibly should have for single family houses that are available. We should probably be sitting around yes. probably 1600 for 1600 single. to 2000, depending on what time of the year, you know, I think that probably your spring market would be probably, probably that 2000 and, and we'd probably be around that 15 to 16. Right. But typical. Yeah. At this I'm, time. I was just saying just single family houses, not with townhouses right. and condos. Right. So you're right about 2000 to 2200 for an even market with probably 300,000 people, yeah. right? So, and then only 282 condos and townhouses available. So it's still one of those markets that you have to be on top of it and you have to be in there and, and know what you're doing. So. Yeah. so basically the best time to sell your house is when you find the next one to move into. Yeah, no, I agree. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. It's We've said that kind of from the very beginning of doing yeah. this podcast is that we need to make sure that you find that right property to move into before you then sell yours, but with the right knowledge, you'll be able to maximize your return and, and, uh, and to win on both sides. So, right. yeah. So, um, what are, I, I guess one thing that people keep on asking us is what are the things that, uh, are moving the fastest? Mm. Anything under 450, I would say, even if it's townhouses, single family homes, east side, west side, it, it doesn't really matter. If I find that anything in those price ranges, if, if they're good homes are going probably within a day, two days, maybe max, um, maybe even multiple offers. Right. It, now that also depends, you know, if there are move-in ready, unless there's something wrong with the house, you know, there are obviously circumstances where that's not happening, but if they're priced accordingly, they're move-in ready homes, you're probably going to be expect to have that gone first day and more than likely in multiple offers. Yeah, no, I, I agree on that. I think that we are starting to see a little bit of, of where the seller is now starting to outprice themselves. Mm -hmm. They're looking at properties that have been totally remodeled or renovated and a lot of money invested into them and trying to compare their property to that. So we are starting to see some properties be overpriced in today's market. So not everybody, everything's selling that fast, but. Yeah. And it's the homes that need work. It's, it's yeah. the renovation costs that I've, I'm seeing is just with, with the increase of costs in the last couple of years is the majority of buyers and, and sellers just really don't understand actually what the new costs are that are associated with those renovations. And a lot of times they're shockingly double. Yeah. Of, of what they were prior to, to COVID. Right. So I do find that a lot of, you know, you get some really good value when things are done, say two or three years ago, that renovations are done rather than the cost point of what people are paying today for that, for that same product or yeah. similar product. I agree. It's, it's shocking for us to understand the cost, but it's even more shocking when people are looking at saying, I want to buy a place. I want to renovate it. This is what I want. And I'm like, do you know the actual cost of that? And when you kind of break it down, explain it to them, they, they're in mis disbelief. They, right. they just don't. And, and I mean, it, 
the prices right now are even shocking to us for to to do it right but you're also paying tomorrow's prices just because of the inventory right and you're also paying for you know the older home the location the you know those kind of things the maturity of the neighborhood the luxuries and the amenities that those places already have as well those those play a huge factor in in what those costs you know it is new construction keeps on going up it's not slowing down and i think as interest rates continue to decrease those those builders will just increase it just because of their their profit levels right the cost to be able to put in uh the, the lot prices and so forth they're going to increase so they're going to balance out on that so it's not that interest rates once they lower it's going to get better value i think it'll just the prices will continue to rise from at least what i see for sure well here's the problem is it's supply and demand that's that's always what we're going back to it does yeah. until we have until we can see an extra thousand listings on the market is that we're still going to be in a, in a deficit of uh, of homes yeah. in saskatchewan at least i, I guess it, we've been saying this for a long time but stay in the market make sure you don't sell your house make sure that you find the property it does take a lot longer to be able to find that right property right now than it mm -hmm. ever has and so it's just looking and figuring that out ahead of time so that when you are ready then you understand locations you understand what you're getting for your value and so forth yeah you almost got to see you know we were talking a little bit about education day and it's kind of going out seeing it with the clients and they got to see the bad before they see the good right it's yeah. like i notice a lot of clients from from my perspective is that everybody loves the new house that that's fully renovated but they also don't understand the value and they're like that's that's way too much money for that, right? But until they actually go out and see... And then it sells $35,000 above what that property yeah. was listed at, and now they're saying, oh... What's happening? Yeah. Yeah. So and that's kind of why I say is sometimes you got to go out, you got to do the research, and, you know, and that's what we're saying, the education days. You go out to do the research, you see the good you see the bad properties and then once you actually see the good one you understand you know where those costs are coming from and and the value right in it as well you, i mean you did bring up that education day and it's an education for both of us right the the, the whoever our client is and us understanding what they're looking for as well but it and it and it's a trust building day right yeah. it's us showing them what our knowledge is within the industry um but at the same time we need to get them onto the part of what actual market value is and right now it's pretty hard to understand for sure and yeah it's i find is that if we don't go through that full process is that it also delays us on finding that right home because they don't understand all those different parameters yep. you know of the you know what's the new build cost what's you know what's the land values in these neighbor in these neighborhoods right the land values are shocking right so i mean when someone's buying a property to tear down and the lot is three hundred seventy thousand, and then they're going to tear it down it's going to cost them an extra forty thousand because it might have asbestos in it mm -hmm. that now that lot is four hundred and ten thousand. so for you to build on that property and make profit as a builder you've got to be building at least a 1.3 1.4 million dollar property yeah and or subdividing it, it. and that's yeah. when you're also looking at you're competing you know the average homeowner is competing against a builder in the mature locations to be able to say okay you know this house really probably doesn't actually hold any value right right like thousand square foot 1960s bungalow 1950s bungalow probably doesn't hold more than Forty to fifty thousand dollars value in the majority of the evaluations that we're doing when it comes down to the land value. Yeah, I totally agree. It uh, and I think those those lots will just continue to increase in price uh, as the the city keeps on growing and lot prices keep on mm -hmm. and lot sizes keep on shrinking. Yeah. And so it's just going to be interesting to see a lot of the older neighborhoods. And I know that uh, like people that live in the older neighborhoods aren't okay with it because they're saying we don't want our neighborhoods to change. Unfortunately, it's whoever owns that property can make a decision on what they want to do with it, right? And, and changes, I mean, it's just going to happen. A lot of that is going to change too once we also, when the city uh, brings out more information on fourplexes and so forth, right? Because I think that's going to play a big role because if somebody can build a fourplex on some of these lots, that will also play a, a big uh, change in what somebody's going to pay for a lot compared to uh, what someone will pay for it for a single family house or a first time home buyer. For sure. Uh, you know, the competing for, 
for mature neighborhoods and, and lots is going to is going to continue to drive prices up in those locations from yeah. my perspective. Yeah. It, uh, unfortunately, it'll price out a lot of first time home buyers that are just looking for that house in that older neighborhood and to, could, they're now buying something in a townhouse or so forth for the same price. But I mean, that's where we see the kind of the market going and we don't see it slowing down here going into the fall. I think it's going to continue to run right through into the winter. It does usually slow down when we get some cold stretches, but other than For that, sure. I think it's it's uh, one of those things you just need to have your property ready. And if it's properly uh, staged and decluttered and ready for market, you're going to still sell it within a very reasonable amount of time and for full dollar value. For sure. So, you know, obviously we, we have a couple of things that's came down to interest rates that are continuing to, to drop, it looks like, you know. Right. Now, what was what's your perspective? Is it like, I know a lot of people, they want a better interest rate. You know, I know with Tony Blay, uh, we talked a little bit about, uh, about you know, variable rates and then fixed rates and maybe doing a variable now and, and locking in later on. Do you think that interest rates are like waiting for a better interest rate is going to help you? And in regards no, to... No, not at all. Right. No. What do you think that the, I, like... I, I mean, okay, ask the question. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think that, you know, by, say, April, is that we're going to see an increase in property values? Oh, this is wild. He hasn't asked me this question yet, so I haven't really thought about it. Perfect. On the spot. On the spot. I'd be surprised if they don't raise another 10%. Whew. Wow. By April, Okay. Okay. I was going to say like 5% increases that I, you know, but yeah, for all the property owners, they're going to be loving you. The buyers won't like you. Yeah, exactly. Um, it, it's just that there is no listings. Yeah. And the, and, the pro and the problem that I see is we're in a tough space because the builders aren't being able to build to capacity. We've got a lot of people uh, migrating from rural communities into the city, which have more money and they're paying cash. Right. And so people are paying tomorrow's prices just because of supply and demand. And I, and for, I hope I'm wrong. To be honest, I hope yeah. I'm 100% wrong because it, it's an unhealthy market as it is. But I mean, we're also the most affordable place in Canada, which is the scary thing, right? And it, there's a lot of different provinces and different cities that have seen this for, I guess, decades. And now we're the first ones that are really seeing it to where our property prices are now becoming unattainable for a lot of people to be even buy a prop property. So um, I hope I'm wrong. But at the same time, as we've interviewed all these different people from, uh, I mean, Cam from the Landlord Association and Chris from the Sketch and Real Estate Association, all it all lines up to telling me that we're this inventory problem is not going to get better. It's just going to get worse. And all the different people that I'm talking to of their families moving into Saskatoon from rural communities, they're just adding to this. That's that's. And I mean, we welcome people's families and so forth, but unfortunately they're not bringing a property to market and they're buying one. Right. And so that makes it a little bit harder. So, um, again, I hope I'm wrong, but yeah. if I just look at those numbers, I'm just like, how does it not? Yeah. What I can see, like there has been a little bit, it seems like a little bit of a slowdown in the amount of sales in the last, in the last little bit here right. at the same time is that I think that's a direct contribution to the quality of homes that are coming on the market. Like, yeah. you know, it is becoming very difficult to find something that is move in ready. That is, you know, a slam dunk to, you know, to move in, no issues, no maintenance or, you know, yeah, no updates or anything yeah. else. But when those come on, they're going 40 over list. 40 to 50. Yeah. I mean, we just had a, we were looking at a property the other day and it had some updates still to do. It was in Lake, it was in Lake Ridge and it was priced at 680,000. And my clients asked me, what do you think it's going to sell for? And, and without even like flinching, I was like 40 to $50,000 more. And they, and they thought I was crazy. I think a little bit, we just started the journey and this was kind of a little bit of education day. Right. And, uh, so they had, when they presented offers, they had 11 offers and it sold for, I guess, $47,111 over list price. So we're pretty bang on to mm -hmm. what those numbers were and it comes through kind of what's available. But they did admit, I said, is this the best house that we've seen on the market? They're like, for sure it is. And I said, well, if you think it's the best thing, 
you're also then working there's you're six look, other people that thought the same thing yeah. for sure and at the same time there's more people that have been lo looking longer than you that have missed out on all these other properties and just want to get into the market so they don't just keep on seeing it increase right so um th that's my thoughts on on where we're going i mean in no way do i want to push up prices and say hey this is what happened because when we first started real estate i remember i think it was in january of 2008 the the basically the star mm -hmm. phoenix came out with an estimate that said property prices i think were going to increase in saskatchewan by i think like 20 some 28 percent or something in saskatoon by 18 percent so they forecasted this growth and all of a sudden it immediately went up in probably about a month and a half or like maybe yeah. a little bit longer two I and a half months yeah. and then all of a sudden then we had the global recession right so not saying the global recession is going to happen i just said like sometimes the media and so forth and these forecasts hurt it because people are trying to now jump into it it's just for us i just I just don't know how we're going to find more inventory. Yeah. And we're in our own little bubble in Saskatchewan as well, too. Like we talk, hear about national media and doing that kind of stuff about housing markets. It, it, it's not as relevant to us in Saskatchewan just because there's like, don't worry, it's relevant. But at the same time, it's we we're in our own little market. We have our own micro economy, yeah. right? Like we're supposed to be, I think we're rated right now the in a, like a first world country, the best place to invest in to in the world for mining. Right. So like where are those people coming from? I mean, they, there's, mm -hmm. I've heard numbers of 15 to 16,000 people in the next, I, I mean, I don't know, I hear anywhere from two to 10 years, people that for the jobs and so forth. And I was like, well, I mean, Saskatoon is the gateway to the north and most people want to live in a, a larger center. So uh, these are all things that, I mean, are, are we're looking at big picture and, and being able to take all these information to be able to say, give, you know, information back to our consumers. For sure. Yeah. So, yeah. but I think that was a lot for everybody to take in. <laughs> I mean, that was a lot for us even to talk about. So, um, I, I want to thank everybody for, for following us on Instagram and Facebook, uh, for watching these podcasts. Uh, it's been, it's been fun doing it with my brother. And, uh, if you have any questions or have anything else that you'd like to cover, uh, for sure, message us, DM us or, uh, or, or email us. And uh, we'd love to, to think of just different things that we can cover that adds value for people uh, in the community of Saskatoon. So, Not to mention, we do still sell real estate. You know, that's always an option for everybody to, to give us a call. We do love and, uh, buying and selling houses and, and love sharing our, uh, I guess, our expertise with, with the, all the clients that we have as well. Yeah, with Duffer Media, I mean, shout out to Gary Nickel. I mean, he, he shoots these episodes with us for two for these four episodes over uh, two hours, one afternoon. So it's like, it makes it very easy for us to be able to break mm -hmm. this down and provide this this information to you. So uh, thanks to him. And yeah, I see it back there, Duffer <laughs> Avenue Media Network. So uh, great guy. Uh, so thanks a lot for joining us today and uh, stay warm.